Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about the idea that once upon a time our planet was most likely purple. It wasn't green, it wasn't blue, it was somewhat similar to what you see on the screen, possibly even more purple than this. And even though this idea is not new, and I even made the video about this a few years ago mentioning the so-called purple earth hypothesis, it looks like now we have actual definitive scientific proof that this was most likely correct. Earth was indeed purple, and there is a very interesting explanation to all of this. So let's talk about this in more detail. First of all, it shouldn't really come as a surprise that back in the days, billions of years ago, Earth looked completely different. Yet another previous video even describes at least five different faces our planet used to have. But today we're talking about one specific stage that I'm going to try to create right here. By first maybe changing the colors of the planet's atmosphere, and also adding a lot of purple pretty much everywhere on the planet. Now obviously the continents here were not like this either, they were completely different as a matter of fact. But here it's all about the color right now. Although in this case even the water should be purple, so this is not even the perfect representation of what all of this looked like. But for many many millions and possibly even billions of years, planet was somewhat similar to what you see on the screen. And then it suddenly transformed into what it is today becoming the blue planet, or technically blue and white planet. Now, what exactly happened approximately 2.4 billion years ago that could have led to this? You might already know the answer. It was the so-called Great Oxygenation Event. The sudden increase of oxygen in the atmosphere that today we believe was caused by the evolution of new bacteria, specifically cyanobacteria. The same bacteria that's responsible for producing the oxygen on the planet right now by using photosynthesis and by converting the solar energy into chemical energy that other animals can use. Now photosynthesis is something we all learn in schools and we're all kind of to some extent familiar with it. Basically many different plants and cyanobacteria use it everywhere on the planet and produce oxygen and of course produce other things like sugars. But in this case what we care about is the idea of converting the energy from the sun into the chemical energy, into something we can use on earth. And obviously in schools we learn about how trees convert CO2 into oxygen, but one thing we don't learn in schools that a lot of scientists have been discovering for the past few decades is that you don't really need oxygen for photosynthesis. Because the main function of oxygen in this case is capturing electrons and allowing for this electron process to essentially lead to other chemical reactions. But we know that there are so many other elements that can also quite successfully capture electrons as well. There are a lot of different theoretical papers that propose that we can use, for example, hydrogen. This is a typical hydrogen cloud somewhere out there in the galaxy. We can also quite as easily use iron, so somewhere out there there could be some sort of life using iron for photosynthesis. We can also use sulfur, which is an excellent electron acceptor as well. Or we can use arsenic. Arsenic, as you might already know or have heard of before, technically is a toxic element, at least to humans. We also normally use arsenic for, for example, different herbicides and insecticides, so in some sense it's a poison. Arsenic is kind of dangerous. But nevertheless, it's a pretty good electron acceptor as well. And so there are theories and papers proposing that maybe arsenic can be responsible for the action of photosynthesis somewhere out there. But of all of these elements, which could have been used by the life on early Earth and which could have turned it into a purple Earth? Now, for many years, scientists believed that it was most likely sulfur and a type of a purple sulfur bacteria that was responsible for essentially producing all sorts of sulfurous compounds on the planet. But because they weren't very efficient, eventually the cyanobacteria using oxygen kind of won the competition, and because these bacteria were very effective and very efficient in producing oxygen, eventually the oxygenation event caused all of the other bacteria to either disappear or to hide somewhere where there was no oxygen. But turns out that maybe, just maybe, it wasn't really sulfur. As a matter of fact, several papers started questioning the idea that maybe it was arsenic after all. Maybe the reason why purple earth was purple was because of vast amounts of bacteria that were using arsenic to produce everything they needed to produce to survive. And eventually, once again, the oxygen won over. And although arsenic can be toxic, it's also, in certain ways, at least when it's turned into organic arsenic, becomes beneficial. For example, in the US today, 
quite a lot of farm animals are fed different types of arsenic compounds to make them grow bigger and stronger. Now, I personally will be very, very cautious about eating this, especially because there are studies suggesting that this organic arsenic then can turn into other arsenic that's poisonous to us. But that's not really the point right now. The point is that arsenic is used by life quite actively, and there are several types of different organisms that depend on the arsenic compounds for survival. And so naturally, you'd expect some other bacteria out there to use arsenic for life as well. And back in 2014, the team behind the paper you can find in the description below discovered that some of these stromatolites that you see on the screen right here, these are actually structures built by all sorts of bacteria, may have been created billions of years ago by the bacteria that used arsenic and not oxygen for its breathing. Or to be more correct, by the arsenic-assisted photosynthesis bacteria. Now, in the past, we have discovered different bacteria already using arsenic for, for example, growth reasons or to substitute it for something else, but it was very difficult to discover bacteria that only used arsenic and no oxygen, nothing else. And it seems that, similar to the bacteria discovered in 2008, some species of bacteria can easily obtain all of the energy by oxidizing arsenates to arsenites and by then using arsenites as a fuel to live and to sustain themselves. Not so long ago, the scientists also identified the enzyme responsible for all of this, and were also able to explain how the bacteria most likely uses all of this to survive, to breathe, to produce energy instead of oxygen. But so far, all of these are just separate clues. None of them really give us a definitive picture. And that's, of course, until the recent discovery coming from South America from one of the most inhospitable places on Earth. The place known as the Atacama Desert, the driest place on Earth and also the place with some of the highest ultraviolet activity on the surface of our planet, simply because it's elevated compared to everything else. Although to be fair, it's also an extremely beautiful and absolutely stunning place that I would love to visit one day. A place that has some of the most incredible looking locations, something that looks almost like out of a science fiction movie. And from what I hear, people are also great as well. But that's for another video. For now, we're talking about what they found here. Completely by accident, the scientists behind this paper found a tiny stream that contained a strange sample of purple bacteria on the bottom. The stream itself was also completely oxygen-free, and so none of the life that required oxygen could survive here. And as you can imagine, in this location, there wasn't really a lot of life happening. So when the scientists saw something purple, they decided to collect the samples and to then analyze it in more detail, trying to discover what exactly was causing all of this to look purple and what kind of a life could exist here. Here's, by the way, where all of this was done and what they were able to collect from this very beautiful purpley looking location somewhere in the Atacama Desert. And as you can probably guess by now, They've discovered the bacteria that used nothing but arsenic, and they were also producing these rocky stromatolites that you see on the screen using all of the chemical reactions and all of the enzymes I previously mentioned. In other words, this was a direct proof that a lot of these stromatolites in the past were most likely created by these types of bacteria that used to exist on our planet and were most likely responsible for turning our planet purple, assuming, of course, these bacteria were all over the planet which currently we don't really have any reason to doubt. On top of this, when the scientists tried to study these bacteria in the lab, they discovered that they used or produced absolutely nothing but arsenic and no oxygen was involved anywhere in the reaction, which of course also means that this is some of the most ancient life on our planet and is also most likely the precursor to everything on the planet as well, and is also a strange survivor of the event that seems to have destroyed pretty much everything on the planet that wasn't able to survive on oxygen. And by the way, a very small side note here. Oxygen in general is extremely toxic, even to humans. Technically, if you were to pressurize oxygen and to try to breathe that afterwards, you would not actually survive for a very long time. This is one of the reasons why scuba divers have to be extremely careful with what they're breathing in. The mix has to be very specific and using pure oxygen is extremely dangerous. And this is, of course, one of the main reasons why when oxygenation event happens, most of the life just couldn't handle it. It was toxic to everything except for certain types of cyanobacteria that adapted to use oxygen, even though the excess of oxygen would probably kill them as well. Although, ironically, arsenic is toxic to us. So in that sense, I guess it's a bit of a trade-off. Anyway, so what the scientists discovered here is kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. 
It definitively proves that Earth very likely looked like this in the past, but more importantly, it allows us to understand what to look for when trying to find life somewhere out there on another exoplanet. If one day we discover a planet that seems to possess somewhat purplish hue and does seem to contain arsenic in its atmosphere, this would be a telltale sign to us that similar life might exist somewhere on the planet that we discovered. Now, so far we are not really able to see the colors of planets very well, but we can definitely detect arsenic in the atmosphere. This is something that we're going to be able to do with some of the telescopes, such as James Webb Telescope, that's going to be operational relatively soon. But personally, I'm more excited about the discovery itself. To me, this is a definitive proof that Purple Earth is not hypothetical anymore. It's something that most likely happened, and it's something that might exist somewhere else out there in the galaxy. But until we learn more about the Purple Earth, or until we discover some other unusual and interesting bacteria on the planet, that's all I wanted to mention in the video. Check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can find in the description below. But either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.